can you tell me about the biggest mistake you made that had a tangible business impact? In terms of business impacts, I am a, I'm graduating at the end of the summer, so I haven't really had that big of a business experience before. I worked one year at a company as a solo software developer, and luckily enough, I didn't actually make any big mistakes there. I actually contributed a whole lot, I think, myself. But I can tell you about a big mistake that I made in life, maybe. Would that be a good answer to this question? Mm. Oh, no. You want no, more of a business thing. Yeah. To, be, to be fair, if I knew up front, if the candidate coming in is relatively junior, I may not ask this question. Yeah. Or even if I do ask this question, if they don't have a good story, like that would not be a strike against them in any way. Right. But I would also say that you can reference college experiences in your answer. Because in the context of, for example, a capstone project or master's thesis project or whatever it is, like you can think of it as a business, right? So a mistake in that that had tangible business impact is something that set your project back, made it harder to deliver or didn't meet the requirements of the assignment or whatever that is. It's still going to be not as strong of an answer, but for fresh college grads, that is, or relatively fresh college grads, that that can be acceptable. Yeah. Oh, definitely, there have been mistakes that I've made in projects that, I've, that we've had, especially for like semester long projects. One of the examples could be we developed an Android application. I'm actually really interested in Android applications as well. But we were developing an Android application for one of our classes, and it was a group of four people that we were working in. And uh, we were supposed to have server side, client side for the application. And I wasn't really, I wasn't so familiar with server side coding and how it worked. And so I tried to not go near the server side coding as much as possible. I contributed a lot to the client side, but later on, close to the end of the semester, I was required to complete a task in server side. So the challenge was to actually go and read all of the code, but I tried to just code whatever I knew. I didn't really go back and read the code that others had, didn't really go learn about it on YouTube or from other sources. So that broke our uh, application for a little while and it really angered my teammates. But what I did to, to respond and come back was to actually go fix everything and we rolled back to GitHub commits that we had made. And I contributed one of my other teammates. We got it all working again and it was fine. And we, got, we actually got a really good and great out of the project as well for that semester. Awesome. Yeah, I think there's a lot of good stuff here. And by the way, there's one thing that, that I want to know. When you said you were delivering an Android app, and by the way, I'm really interested in Android development. If you're applying for an Android job, that is terrific, right? That is an example where you can put in passion in the middle of your answer and it just works organic, right? So if you're applying for a job that has Android development in, in its raw expectations, this could work really well. If you are not though, then I would consider admitting that potentially. Yeah, so definitely. I am I am applying for a lot of Android jobs. Yeah, yeah then, then I would definitely mention that. Like you're showing passion, you're showing genuine interest in the, in, the, in the technology, and it's coming off very organically in the middle of the story. The let's see. Other otherwise the situation I think worked was really good. The situation part of the answer. I think the, the one thing that I might say is the not familiar with server side, so tried not to go near it. I'd, I would minimize that because basically what you're showing from a behavioral interview perspective, what I hear is when a candidate doesn't know something, they don't have a learn and be curious mentality. Right? Like they don't actively try to go and find out. Instead, the other way to say it might be, I hadn't had time to really dig into the server side work because there was so much client side work to be done that I was really focused on that. So it's the same thing. You didn't go to the server side. But not because you didn't want this, just you didn't have the time because you were really occupied with the client side. So it's a quite, it's a little bit of spinning. You're spinning it in a bit more positive light. Same thing in the action part. So when you're saying the challenge was to read all the code, but you didn't do that, you didn't read the rest of the code, and you just did your own thing. Yes, that works, and that shows the mistake, but there is a way to spin that in a little bit less destructive a manner. You could say we were under a really tight deadline, so I didn't have time to go and read through all the code that the other coworkers wrote, and I didn't really have time to go learn 
deeply about what needed to be done. So I implemented something that I felt was the right way forward. However, because I hadn't done as much due diligence as maybe I should have, I wound up breaking things. So again, you're spinning it in a slightly different, slightly different way. So it's still a mistake and you're still acknowledging the mistake. It just doesn't sound quite as potentially problematic, if that helps. Does, does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. So even in the worst of situations, when I have made a mistake, when I'm explaining it to an interview, I put a positive spin on it and somehow make it not as negative as it was. The thing is, it's all a question of interpretation, right? What, like the signals that I, that a hiring manager or an interviewer is going to get about the candidate is based on what they say. So the interpretation in an interview setting becomes fact, right? So if what I hear is I wasn't interested in server side, so I just tried to avoid it as much as I could, the fact that has now settled in my head is, oh, Arash doesn't have learn and be curious as one of, one of his leadership principles. Now that's a fact for me now. It is not a interpretation, right? The original message that you had was the way you interpreted your action. So the original message was ambiguous. In other words, like you could have interpreted them differently. With them. In other words, for folks who are vocally self-critical, like being that vocally self-critical in an interview setting can actually hurt. I see. Okay. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. It's a fine balance. The only thing I wanted to add in there is that I wanted to know a little bit more about the stakes of what if something went wrong or this project for some reason wasn't delivered in the situation portion of it. I'd like to understand, was this life or death for you? Would you have not been able to graduate where, or did it really not even matter? And I never really quite concluded that one way or another until at the end when you said, you know, we got a really good grade. Um, Oh, and there's that we were creeping in again. Yeah. Also, should I use less of we in, and should I more use more I in, in that, in those terms? Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Just remove the word we from your vocabulary entirely when you're, mm -hmm. when you're talking about this. Okay. okay. And I add, also add some more stake, explain a little bit more. We were on a tight deadline close to the end of the semester. And this was a huge project that we've been working on from the beginning of the semester. So add something like that to it would make it better as well. Right? Yeah. Uh, so yep. I, without the we. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> without the we. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Rich. Sean Green. So next time we're going to do very similar mock interviews. And again, like if you struggling with something else and you need some other advice, feel free to ask, feel free to ask a join to our, to our discord channel uh, as well. I will post it here. If you feel that you need some more private conversation, jump on the, our discovery call. It's free. And if you decide to go with us into the group coaching sessions. Welcome. If, if I can add like a, a, a small thing, what is a story bank typically takes quite a bit of effort to develop, right? And yeah. what I say by story bank is what I mean is like 10 to 20 stories that are targeted at the most common behavior interview questions that you know very well, not memorized, but at least you can speak to without overt mental effort, right? And that come off strong. Those, that kind of a story bank does take quite a bit of back and forth to develop. Right. So like I've had clients who come in with a story, I provide some feedback, they go back, they revise the story, they practice the story, they come back again, they tell the story again, I provide potentially some more feedback. Finally, we get to a story that is actually as strong as they want it to be. Now that story is ready for the interview. They go to the next story and so forth. Question yeah. from Amy. Can you tell stories that happened 10 years ago? That, yeah, go ahead. Not advised, not advisable. People really want to know who you are. Now. And so definitely have a bias toward the past three years, past two years and past one year, even better. The more recent, the better. 
And then you can actually remember a lot of the details when there's not an effort to understand exactly what happened, what you did, what your role was. You'll be bringing those stuff, that type of detail out much more easily than it's something that happened 10 years ago, unless you're like me and you live in the past. <laughs> the, the one addendum I would put to that is if it's a negative story, it yeah. can actually work, right? Like you could say early on in my career, and especially if it was a very formative story. Like, for example, I have a story when somebody asked me that question, I tell them about a time that I wrote code that DDoS verisign.com, right? I literally created a DDoS attack against verisign.com. It was a function that I wrote that caused it. That happened 20 years ago, but it was a very formative experience in the sense that it formed how I approach management, how I approach team process and all of that. And so, yeah, I'll tell that story. And that story never fails to land because impact, big impact. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's true. The mistake stories are further in the past. <laughs> They've changed a lot since then. If you can convey that with your behavior and your stories, that's a really good 